Moving on then, I want to talk about AC versus DC current, and then I've got a few questions for you to answer. So, there's two types of current that you can have through a circuit. Um, there's a small bit of your topic, but it may well come up in your exam, so you need to be aware of it. Um, there's alternating current. That is current that changes direction. And it constantly changes direction backwards and forwards. So if you think about before, it will go into negative, positive, negative, positive. And then there's direct current, which moves only in one direction. This direct current is the current that would be supplied by a battery. And this current would be your mains electricity. So there's AC current flowing through your home. <clears throat> and you might see these um, voltage graphs for um, AC and DC current. Now this one here shows voltage for AC because you can see it's going into the negative and then into the positive again over here, back into the negative, back into the positive, where it's constantly changing direction. If you were to have a direct current, that would look like this on the graph, where you would only have just a single line where the current, where the voltage, sorry, is not changing. So this example here would be for a direct current, hopefully you can see that line. Whereas where it goes up and down, that's a trace for a C current. Now you'll get some questions on this in relation to period and if you're doing high paper in relation to frequency of the wave. And how they make it difficult is rather than saying each square is worth 0.05 seconds, for example, they'll say each horizontal division. All that means is each square to you and I. So each square is 0.05 seconds, so here to here is 0.05 seconds. Calculate the period of the wave. Now to calculate the period you need to look at where one wave is, so we'd go down here, up there and down there for one wave. So if that's our one wave we need to calculate the time from the start of the wave to the end of the wave which is one, two, three, four squares. And if each square is 0.05 seconds, we do 0.05 multiplied by 4 to give us a period of 0.2 seconds. So all period is, is the time for one wave to complete. So just to stress for foundation, all you need to do is count how many squares there is for one complete wave and then times that by the number they give you for each horizontal division. Now for higher tier, what you'd have to do, they don't give you this equation on the exam paper, so you need to remember this one. You need to calculate the frequency, and to do that you do 1 divided by the period, and over here we said it's 0.2 seconds. So we would get a frequency of 5 hertz. Okay, so a couple of things that you might associate with these um, AC or DC oscilloscope traces. The machines that these traces go on are called oscilloscopes and you may well have seen one of those in one of your um, classrooms. A few facts then that we need to know about AC current for mains electricity in the home. These are just things that you kind of need to write down on a post-it note um, and try and read over and over and again to commit to memory. That is the potential difference of this mains electricity is 230 volts Really important that we remember that one, and I'll tell you why later. And also the frequency, frequency is 50 hertz. Okay, so the mains electricity, the potential difference is 230 volts, and the frequency is 50 hertz. So there's a few questions here for you on the last couple of things we've just done. Um, but first of all, I want to talk about this blue wave going through here because this will come up later and it's important. If you see a wave going around 0 volts, this is your neutral wire and this would be your live wire in red here. So the live wire, the voltage oscillates up and down because it's alternating, but I want you to remember that this neutral wire here is always at naught volts, okay?